Um, I'll see if I can link it below on Amazon. He wrote a book called The Foundling, uh, where a lot of this information comes from. And so he said that he had a very happy childhood. He had amazing parents. Um, and albeit a bit overbearing, but I mean, that's normal given that they had their child kidnapped, but Paul never knew what happened to him until one day when he was 10 years old, he was searching in the attic for his Christmas presents and he found a box that contained news articles about a missing baby called Paul Franczak. So he confronted his mother and she was pretty angry with him for snooping and didn't really want to talk about it. She just said, you were kidnapped, you were found. That's it. And they didn't talk about it anymore. But over the next few years, as Paul got older, he felt that not everything was quite right. He didn't look like his younger brother. He didn't look like his parents. And just personality-wise, he wasn't like them either. He had long hair. He was a rocker. And his family were pretty clean-cut people. Um, after high school, Paul moved to Arizona, where he became a bass player for a rock band. And he had many jobs over the years before he finally moved to Las Vegas, Nevada, where he got married and had a daughter. And Paul said that it was after having a daughter that he realized how important genetics really are. He said, not only did my daughter look like me, but she also acted like me. And he said, you know, genetics plays a big part in your personality as well. It's not just you or your environment it, it like raises you or who your friends are it has a lot to do with your genetics um and so he couldn't get it out of his head uh but dna testing was really rare back then this would have been like in the 80s so um he, there's not much he could do about it until 2012 when paul who is now 47 went to a cvs pharmacy and he saw a do it at home DNA kit and he buys it on the spot so when his parents came to visit him from Chicago he had to like pick up the courage to ask them to do this and he didn't dare to ask them until he was driving to the, them to the airport and dropped them back off to go home and he said look um haven't you ever wondered if I'm really your biological son and of course they had so they agreed to do the test they all swapped their cheeks and um paul drove back home but right after his parents landed they called him and said that they changed their mind that they didn't want him to send off the kit and he didn't want to hurt his parents feelings so he put it in his desk drawer and left it there but it he just couldn't forget about it um he said, you know, I kept nagging at him because he really wanted to know who he was. So he eventually sent off the DNA kit for testing and he received the results about six months later. What he kind of always knew that he wasn't their biological son. So he wrote them a letter to let them know the result and to explain it as well, like why he did it. But they were very angry with him and they actually didn't speak to him for over a year. But Paul didn't do this for himself. He said that they were amazing parents and what he wanted, yes, he wanted to know who he was, but he, it wasn't about him. Like his parents were worried that he was going to replace them with his real parents, but that wasn't what he wanted to do. He wanted to know who he was, but he didn't want to find his parents and like reconnect with them. What he wanted to do was reconnect his parents his adopted parents with their real son. He really wanted to find the real baby Paul because he felt, he felt that his parents deserved that, which I think is so beautiful. I mean, that's a very selfless thing to do because you're essentially replacing yourself with their real child, you know? Um, so... He went to the media in Las Vegas and went public with his story. And because of this, the FBI picked it up and reopened Paul's case. And they found like 10 boxes with files about this case and started looking into it again. He did TV interviews, TV appearances.
says he actually appeared on a TV show called 2020, which I think is a very big, like, unsolved crime thing on ABC in the United States. Um, he appeared on there twice, and the TV show 2020 connected him with a genealogist called Cece Moore. Now, she did brilliant work. She did a really great investigation into his DNA. She used a lot of public DNA databases just to be able to find any connection with any of his family members, distant relatives, third cousins, anything that she could find. And she was eventually able to put together a family tree for him. So on June 3rd, 2015, Cece calls Paul and tells him that his real name is Jack. His name is Jack Rosenthal, and he had a twin sister called Jill. I mean, sidebar, Jack and Jill, like, that's really cute. Um, it's not a cute story, by the way, but I just think the names, you know, are cute. Um, so Jill apparently had disappeared as a baby and has never been found. The Rosenthals were not a great family. Um, there was a lot of abuse in the family, and one cousin remembers the the twins always crying and being locked in cages. Um, and eventually the twins disappeared, but nobody questioned it because the mother said that the other side told her side of the family that the other side was taking care of them. And the dad told his side of the family that the other side was taking care of them and nobody really looked into it. Um, Paul believes that something bad must have happened to Jill, whether, uh, it was like an accidental death or whether one of the, his parents killed her um, and that they abandoned him because they couldn't explain why they had one twin and not the other but he doesn't he's but he doesn't hold a grudge towards like with his family he says that them abandoning him is the best thing they could have done because he ended up with this really great family being raised really well and he wouldn't have been if he had been living with them. Um, everything changed for Paul when he found out where he really was. He was actually six months older than he thought he was and I read a... Uh, he has a blog. I'll link it below as well. And he read... I, he, he made a post a while ago where he said, oh, I'm a Scorpio. Like, you know, he was six months older than he thought he was. He had a completely different star sign. He had different, he had a different, you know, he had, he had different medical records. He had different ancestry because um, he was baptized and he was raised in a very Catholic family. But according to his DNA, his, his real not his real family, that's not, that's not how I want to say it, but like his biological family is actually Jewish, so he is completely different from who he thought he was, um, and he's really happy that he has answers to who he is, um, but now he really wants to know what happened to Jill and what happened to the real baby Paul. To this day, the answers have still not been found. They're continuing to search the DNA databases in the hope that they can find anything related to him. Um, there is a little, there is an entry on Paul's blog that I will read that I thought was really nice. He said that he's been really busy and like the, the search has been a little bit put on hold, he said, but soon I'm expecting to enter into a period of intense investigation into both mysteries, and I couldn't be more excited. I will be heading back to the East Coast and the Atlantic City area, and hopefully building up my Rosenthal family tree, and getting closer and closer to finding out what happened to my twin sister, Jill. Of course, my biggest wish is that she's still alive and out there somewhere, because if she is, I will find her. I promise you, I will find her. I don't know, um what happened with his real parents because I'm guessing that if they found cousins, cousins who remembered the twins being in a cage, they obviously know who his parents are. I don't know what happened to them, if they're still alive or not. Um, but it doesn't look like they've made a lot of progress in finding out what happened to Jill. Uh, the, Paul said, um, or like Jack, but I'm going to just keep calling him Paul. He 
said that he will remain Paul Franksack until the missing Paul is found, and he will then happily hand over the birth certificate to him. Now, there is one big theory about what could have happened to baby Paul, and it is that a woman named Linda Taylor, who was known in Chicago as the welfare queen, actually took him. Um, she was pretty well known because Reagan used her in uh, in his presidential campaign to highlight how the social welfare system was broken. This woman claimed over $150,000 each year in benefits that she wasn't entitled to. Uh, and she was eventually arrested for this. Now, the reason that people think she took the baby, I'm just going through an article, I'm trying to find the exact piece. Um, um, she claimed back then that she worked as a nurse, but no Nobody has on record that she actually worked in any hospital, but she did own a nurse's uniform, and one of her neighbors said that she remembered her leaving the house that morning in her nurse's uniform the morning that baby Paul was kidnapped. But I will say this, they, none of the people were interviewed until many years later because she was actually arrested for all of this. 1977, which I believe is also when they started looking into the possible allegations that she might have something to do with, um, with baby Paul's disappearance. So this is like a decade later. I've read reports that said they interview people five years later, but I don't know if those are true because, um, this all happened much later. So I doubt that this neighbor actually remembers the specific day that she left her house in a nurse's uniform. I think she just was like, baby was kidnapped by someone dressed as a nurse. She had a nurse's uniform. I'm just gonna put two and two together that she actually walked out, but I don't know if she actually, if that's actually true. Um, what did happen is that one of her ex-husbands said that in the early 60s, she showed up at the house one day with a newborn baby boy, but she wasn't pregnant. She does have a son uh, in 2014. He gave an interview when he himself was, I think, 67 years old. Um, 64 years old. And he said that he remembers um, this, like, he would have been, I don't know exactly, I think he was like uh, a, like a early teenager, like 10 or 12 years old. He said that he remembers his mother bringing home a baby and that he used to play with that baby. And looking at a picture of baby Paul, he said that it definitely looks like it was that baby. But one day he came home from school and the baby was gone. And he thinks that his mother um, handed the baby to one of her boyfriends in Tennessee. I don't really know what I think about all of that because... It's such a vague story, you know. Yes, there are witnesses. Both her husband and her son know that she came home with a baby one day without any seeming reason for it and that he was just gone. Um, but she apparently had multiple partners at that time. And for her to just give the baby to one of her boyfriends, I don't know. I... I mean, police investigated her in connection to baby Paul's disappearance and weren't able to tie it to her. I do understand, though, that she was arrested in the 70s and they might not or most likely didn't have the names of her boyfriends or the guy who lived in Tennessee and weren't properly able to follow up on this. I, when I first started reading the story, I mean, you know, you figure out pretty quickly where this is going, that the found toddler was not the biological son. My first thought was, if he's taken by someone pretending to be a nurse, it's probably a woman who desperately wanted a child, and he would have been, you know, like, raised really well, or even if he was sold, he was probably sold to parents who really wanted a child, and again, he would have been raised really well. This 
However, if it's true that she took him and gave him to one of her boyfriends, you have to kind of question what kind of man has a relationship with this type of woman. And I don't have great hope then for what happened to him or how he was raised if he wasn't sold in some kind of child ring. I don't know. I'd like to hold out hope that she had nothing to do with it and that it was just a strange coincidence and that he was raised by someone very loving. Um, and I hope that we find out one day. I know they're still actively working on it, but as of today, they haven't found anything more about either baby Paul or about Jill. But I thought this case was so interesting. I actually love the fact that he, yes, obviously wanted to know who he was, but that he also really wanted to give his amazing parents their son. And I think that they always must have known that he wasn't their biological son. I don't know if he ever would have if he hadn't found that box because I went through a long phase where I thought I was adopted because I don't look like either of my parents. I don't really have their personality. I look like some of my cousins, but not that much. I, for a long time, was like I'm adopted. Um, and they eventually, my parents eventually, like, took me seriously and showed me all, like, these baby pictures from in the hospital and everything. It was like, see, like, we've had you from you, from when you were born, like, you're ours. Um, but looking different and being different doesn't necessarily mean that you're not the biological child. So he would have always noticed he was different, but I don't know if he would have ever thought that he wasn't really theirs if he hadn't found that box. But I would imagine that they always thought that. Um, and I just want to point out, I do sometimes say like not really theirs, but I obviously mean not biologically because I'm a firm believer of that your parents are the people who raise you with love and, you know, unconditionally, not the people who gave birth to you, because that's not always the same thing. So, um, I think it's great for him that he got such a great family because he could have gotten a lot worse and that he found out who he is. Um, and I really hope that he finds more answers about his sister and about baby Paul. And I'll definitely be keeping an eye on this one to see if there's any updates. Um, so yeah, I will link uh, his book down below and his blog down below. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you all soon.